Hey folks, and welcome to this special series, Enneagram and Wings. Ian Cron, welcome to the show. My good friend, Antonio Skinnerio, thank you very much. <laughs> good to see you. We're going to push on to Wings here in just a minute, but uh, we have a little theme at the front end of this where you made fun of me because you said it looked like I was broadcasting from prison because I had a blank wall behind me. Now I have... Just stop it. <laughs> you had a black concrete wall it looked like it looked like typology live from you know uh what was the johnny cash one live from Folsom prison yes you know it was kind of cool but really not so cool so i'm glad you got a picture of johnny swim up there you got your your turntable a turntable yes you get your turn to yeah it's, it's great and I'm featuring a record for uh, each episode, and today is one of my before and afters, my BCAD Stevie Wonder. This record changed my life. Songs in the Key of Life. Never, ever, ever gets old. Ever. Nope. No. So, thankful for that. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, so... We are uh, taking this time to uh, to delve into something that we haven't uh, had much time to do before during our regular show, but we get lots of questions from from listeners about wings and uh, touch on it from time to time, as I said, but uh, there's so much more to wings than people realize. So let's let's dive into it a little bit here. Yeah, you know, oftentimes people think that wings only give us an added layer of clarity about our dominant type when they're really so much more. Mm -hmm. So in this episode, what I want to do is I want to give a brief overview of what wings are, why they're important. Then I want to break down how wings profoundly change each Enneagram type. Today we're going to talk about threes mm -hmm. and how they can be resources for us. Love that. All right. Yeah. So let me explain what the wings are. Okay. Um, you have two numbers adjacent to your dominant type. So I'm a four. I got a three on one side. I got a five on the other side. Right. One of those is my dominant wing. Mm -hmm. In my case, it's three. Okay. Okay. Now, what do I pick up from that dominant wing? It's like salt and pepper, right? Mm -hmm. it, the three, my three wing seasons my four dominant type. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I pick up from it some of its characteristic features and traits. Mm -hmm. Right. And they get mixed up in with my four. Right. So as a four with a three wing, I'm picking up the ambition sort of side, a little bit more image conscious, uh, able to be socially more adaptable than a four with a five. Let's say, you know what right. I mean? Right. So your 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 dominant wing brings resources over to you in your dominant type. And that's really, really helpful. Now, what's really interesting is while your motivation and your number never change, your behavior can be influenced by your wing so much so that you can even start to look like it from time to time. That's so interesting. Well, and you just, you're kind of hinting to the, the fact that you've had that experience a bit, right? Oh, yeah. There's no such thing as a pure personality type. You're, you're mm -hmm. always a mashup of two types, your dominant type and your, your dominant wing. Mm -hmm. You cannot, for example, be a three with a seven and a six wing. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, in other words. Oh, wait a minute. I'm for sure that I'm like a four with a seven wing. You can't do that. No, only fours can because they think they're special. <laughs> can break the system. <laughs> okay. I'm so different. No, you can, if you're a, if you're a three, you can only have a two or a four wing. Those are the right. numbers adjacent to your type. Okay. Right. Otherwise we're playing scramble gram. All right? right. Now here's why it's important to know your wing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wings are important because they reveal a whole different side of your personality and they can explain contradictory elements within your personality. Like mm. it can explain why people who share the same type can look very, very different from each other. Right. Okay. So give us an example of that. Okay. Again, I'm a four, right? Mm -hmm. 
a four with a three wing looks much, much different than a four with a five wing. A nine with an eight wing looks a lot different than a nine with a one wing. We both share the same core type, but we look very different because we have different dominant wings. Right. So let's talk about the gradations of the wings. All right. So your core type will always dominate, but if your wing is so strong that it begins to compete with your core personality type, we call that a heavy wing. Mm. You can have a moderate wing or a light wing, but I want to talk about the heavy wing because it can make it difficult to discern your type when your core number and your dominant wing exert nearly equal influence on your type. I love Does that. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. Actually, I was with uh, some friends yesterday and they were asking me, they said, can you guess what his type is? And I started by eliminating. I learned that from you. I eliminated what I knew he wasn't. We we're just playing a little game. And uh, I was like, I was in the, re the realm of three, eight, seven. I was thinking eight. He was a seven with an eight wing. It's like, but the eight had so influenced him that he, you know, had a lot of those eight uh, personality traits. So yeah, love that. So as we look at the different types, uh, you know, depending upon their dominant wing, what does it look like for the wings to influence the three? Yeah, the three. So if you identify as the performer or a three, you could be either a three with a two wing or a three with a four wing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now threes with a four wing um, care more about depth and authenticity than a three with a two wing. Mm -hmm. These people um, have a, a, a rich inner life, um, richer than the three with uh, the, the, the two wing does. Mm -hmm. um, because threes can be chameleons and fours value authenticity, threes with fours sometimes experience tremendous confusion and interior dissonance. We've spoken about this on the show yes. uh, a lot, right? At the same time, they're projecting an image to please the crowd, right? The three. The four wing, the dominant four wing is pointing at them and screaming, you're a phony, right? You're a fraud, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Threes with four wings tend to be more introspective and in touch with their shame and often feelings more so than three uh, with two. Mm -hmm. They're sensitive, more sensitive, artistic, a little bit more emotionally intense, and, and they work more carefully on crafting the right image. Uh, Threes with four wings aren't as driven to be stars as threes with twos, but they can be a little bit more pretentious. Quick note, great reference episode for three with a four wing is Louis Giglio. Uh, go check that one out if you are a three, you think you're a three with a four wing. Okay, so threes with a two wing. Charming and intimate. Uh, they make great entertainers, politicians, salespeople, pastors. Hmm. Um, they, um, uh, how would I say this? When their lust for attention and recognition overtakes them or when they feel unappreciated, they can also become angry and hostile. You see how hmm. that two is getting into the three? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right there? Yeah. So these threes still have a strong desire to be recognized for their achievements, but they also use some energy to help other people be successful. That's hmm. a nice little quality that they have. Okay, so you said earlier that wings don't just add an additional layer of clarity, but they're actually resources. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, totally. So, you know, your wing doesn't just add a new set of distinctions or clarity to your dominant type, right? Mm -hmm. They are they're resources to us. So I'm a four with a three wing. It's very natural for me in this moment, for example, to lean hard into that heavy three wing of mine and pull out the resources I need to be the guy I'm presenting myself to be in this moment, mm -hmm. right? I, I've got a lot of energy, then I'm, I'm trying to, trying as best I can to be charismatic and entertaining, et cetera, mm -hmm. trying to win over the crowd, right. right? I'm drawing resources out of that three. At the same time, if I were writing a book right now, I could intentionally and consciously make the decision to say, I gotta lean into my five. Mm. And, and I got to pull some resources from my five to help me study and research and be alone and get to the computer and, and really 
get my jam on to write a book. I can intentionally go to either wing, mm -hmm. dominant or lesser developed, and say, I'm going to go pull resources. And that intentional conscious decision is an opportunity that I think a lot of people miss. I love it. I love that you have that option and that uh, we're giving people that information. Well, thanks again for joining us for Enneagram and Wings. We hope uh, you've all uh, appreciated and, and uh, taken something away from this, especially you threes. Thank you, Ian Cron, for joining us. My big pleasure. And we'll see y'all later. <laughs>